We will look at Genesis chapter 2, please. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Let's talk about the Garden of Eden. Where is it located? What is the history of the Garden of Eden? Why is it so significant? And then we're going to look at verses 9 and then 11 through 12. Verses 9 through 11 through 12. Now the Garden of Eden, it did not start with Adam and Eve. It started out before Adam and Eve. So let's put the worlds right here. So we're going to put three worlds right here. So in these three worlds right here, we're going to see that the first one came through Lucifer, and then to Adam, and then we're going to look at today. So where is the Garden of Eden? Can we find it? Is it lost? Uh, what is the history of the Garden of Eden? It started out with Lucifer, actually. So Lucifer, we know this, he had to have fallen. We know he fell before God created Adam and Eve. So it is a teaching which we call the Genesis Gap. I have a video on that one, very thorough on it. You can watch it. But we do know that Lucifer had to have fallen and sinned before Adam came into existence. The reason why is because sin corrupts God's creation. And the Bible says when God created Adam and the world, it had to be good. So... Sin had to be gone. Uh, it had to be destroyed. So Lucifer's sin corrupted the old world. That's why it's gone. And then God had to recreate through Adam. It's very plain that Adam became the second because the Bible says that God told Adam, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. So to fill again. Anyway, aside from that, let's start off with Lucifer. But we're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, on the description of the Garden of Eden. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. And what? The tree of knowledge of good and evil. So notice right here that God created the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So let's just put simply tree of evil. That's the first thing you want to notice right here. Let's look at a second thing right here about the garden. Verse 9. Uh, we read in verse 11. The name of the first is Pison, that is, it which com compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is what? Gold. gold. And notice verse 12, and the gold of that land is good. There is bdellium and the onyx stone. So notice right here, it's rich in gold and jewelry. Such rich minerals. You're going to see rich jewels mentioned in this garden. Now Lucifer, before he fell, you've got to realize this. When he walked through the Garden of Eden, and that Garden of Eden also became a part of him. In fact, he became known as the Tree of Evil and the Rich Jewels. You'll look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. What? You crazy. No, the Bible shows it. Look at Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel 28. Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Who's this king of Tyrus, full of wisdom, perfect in beauty? It's not a regular king of Tyrus, it's Satan. Because look at verse 14. Thou art the what? Anointed cherub that covereth. Well, that's pretty plain that it's Satan. He's the fallen cherub. But notice also, verse 15. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Notice, till iniquity was found in thee. See, that is plainly Satan. He was in a perfect anointed cherub state, but then he fell into sin. Now, look at verse 13. What about this fallen cherub, Satan? 13. Thou hast been in where? Eden. Eden, the garden of God. Look at this. Every precious stone was a covering. Wow. Remember, Eden consisted of what? Rich jewels. And he's been in Eden, and notice a part of Eden was also a part of him. Keep reading. Uh, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, 
and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold. So notice right here, you'll notice that gold, and you'll notice the onyx, and other elements, which matches with Genesis chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. So Ezekiel chapter 28 shows that Lucifer was covered in rich jewels. The garden, remember, this we're talking about here the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden. And the Garden of Eden consisted of what? Rich jewels. And Satan consisted of the same jewels that the Garden of Eden came from. But not only that, he's likened to that tree as well. Look at Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 31. Ezekiel chapter 31. That's why it makes perfect sense that when Eve partook in the fruit of the forbidden tree, that she was corrupted with sin. Why? Because a part of that tree actually is a part of Satan as well. We're going to look at Ezekiel chapter 31. You crazy. No, look at the Bible. I don't know if churches teach you this, but that's why it's important to be in a Bible-believing church. Amen. Other churches, they all they do is tell you little ditty devotionals and they don't study much of the Bible they focus on getting a big church a lot of people Come in on. programs and having good time but they don't study and grow in the Word of God that's why you're not gonna hear stuff like this before now look at Ezekiel chapter 31 we're gonna look at verse 8 the cedars in the what garden. garden of God cannot hide him so it's talking about a specific tree in God's garden keep reading the fir trees were not like his boughs, and the chestnut trees were not like his branches, nor what? Any tree in the garden of God was like unto who? Him in his beauty. Whoa. Remember Ezekiel 28? Thou art the anointed cherub, Satan, that was perfect in thy beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. This being, it's him, him, a person. And he is what? He is like a tree that the other trees in the garden could not match up to. But keep reading verse 9. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that, notice, all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God, what? Envied him. Wow, I told you so. Why do you think, then, there was the serpent nearby that tree and tempted Eve to partake in that? That book is amazing, yeah. I'll tell you that much. So notice right here, Ezekiel chapter 31 also shows that Lucifer, Satan, he consisted with the tree of evil as well. Now let's keep reading. We're going to look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 10. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. Now let's talk about the location of Eden. The location of Eden. Genesis chapter 2, and we will read verse 10. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. Okay, so we can see that it's located nearby a river. Uh, it's located nearby a river that went out of Eden. And from thence it was, notice, parted and became into four heads. So the garden is located at a river area where it parts into four ways. The name of the first is Pison, that, which, uh, that is it which compesseth the whole land of Havilah where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There's Bedellium and the onyx stone. That matches with Ezekiel 28, you might recall. Verse 13, and the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. So there is a river that goes down to Ethiopia. Now let's keep reading. And the name of the third river is Hidekel. That's the Tigris River. That's the Tigris River. That is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. So that's really plain. The river that goes to the east of Assyria would be the Tigris. And the fourth river, it maintained its name till today, is Euphrates. If you want to find those rivers where it parts, the four rivers, it's going to be at the north of the Persian Gulf. 
So when you look at the north end of the Persian Gulf, then you're going to see that the, there are four rivers parting, and that's where the Garden of Eden is located, right around there. But if you go to that land today, notice the Garden of Eden is what? It's a garden, verse 10. Verse 12, it's rich in minerals. Do you see that today? No, it's nothing but a desert, a wilderness. Why? What happened? Because God drove man out of the Garden of Eden. And he says, you're not, you're not allowed to come back there. So when Lucifer fell, God had to destroy this world with a universal flood. We're going to look at that later. Then when Adam sinned, the Lord had to kick him out. And did he destroy the garden? No, he actually kept it there. And it was guarded by certain angelic beings. And the Lord, he made sure that the cherubims guarded it. And not only that, a sword of fire. So the Lord kept mankind out of that garden. But then as years and uh, centuries to millennia have passed by, mankind grew. They could not enter the garden, but they corrupted the whole planet. So then what did the Lord do? He had to drown it out. Thus came Noah's flood. That's why you can't find the garden today. Why? Because it's obvious. Noah's flood, what did it do? It destroyed the whole world, including the garden. That's why you can't find the garden today, obviously, because Noah's flood destroyed it all. So over there is nothing but empty desert. I mean, if the easiest evidence is just drop by that area. <laughs> drop by that area. It's not the garden of God anymore. But look at Isaiah chapter 37. Isaiah chapter 51. Excuse me. Isaiah chapter 51. So then why did you write a world of today for the Garden of Eden if it's gone? Because it's going to come out today. Look at Isaiah chapter 51. It's not going to be, it's not here right now, but it will be sometime in this modern day and age. Look at Isaiah chapter 51. You'll read verse 3. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. All right. The Bible says in the future sometime the Lord will restore the nation of Israel. He's going to be there and rule over them. If some of you know your Bible, did that ever happen in the Old Testament? No. Did it happen today in the New Testament? No. It's definitely not going to happen at the tribulation. But after the tribulation, God will come down on this world and rule for a thousand years, right? So it's going to be at the millennium, the 1,000-year reign of Jesus Christ. And in the millennium, will the Garden of Eden be restored? Absolutely, because keep reading. And he will make her wilderness like what? Eden and her desert like what? The Garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness shall be found there in thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Look at that. So God's going to restore it. He's going to restore it like he did with the Garden of Eden. Now we're going to look at 2 Peter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. Now, some people who do not believe in a Genesis gap, one of their arguments is you can't say that there's like a second to fourth to third Garden of Eden. But that is actually very easy to answer. Of course we can say that. You know why? Because you already saw the verse where God's going to restore the Garden of Eden at that location. Let's look at 2 Peter 3. So how do we know there was a universal flood with Lucifer? Because of 2 Peter 3. Verse 5. Uh, verse 4, excuse me, verse 4. What did the last part of verse 4 say? From the beginning of what? The creation. So during the timeline of the beginning of the creation, what happened? Verse 5. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So notice that heavens, see the whole universe was drowned out. The earth was literally standing out and in the wa water. Verse 6, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. The whole world had to be drowned out. It, and when it was completely drowned out, notice verse 7, but the heavens and the earth, which are what? Now. now. 
So notice the whole, it's the whole Earth globe, as well as the whole universe itself, it was all drowned out, and then now it's changed to the present. If God can do that with the whole universe, what's the problem with a little bit of a garden, which is part of that universe, part of that Earth? It's not hard. It's not hard to believe because the garden is included with the universe and the world. If you believe God restored the universe and the world, and the Garden of Eden is in that, obviously he had to do the same thing. Look at verse 7, the heavens and the earth which are now, correct? He had to restore it all back. The Garden of Eden is within that heavens and world, so obviously there was a restoration as well. So notice right here, a lot of people mistakenly use that for Noah's flood, but you can't do that. Why? Because the reason why is very simple. As I've told you before, the context of verse 4 is in the beginning. Not only that, you saw heavens. So it's the whole universe itself. Not only that, that explains Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Remember, 2 Peter 3, 4, in the beginning of creation. Immediately, Genesis 1, 2 says what? The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And 2 Peter 3, 4 said, in the beginning of creation, 2 Peter 3, 5 said, the heavens and the earth in the water. See, it matches perfectly. It matches perfectly what happened. So we believe right here, this is what's going to happen with the Garden of Eden. It's not hard to believe in restoration of the garden here. Why? Because you all believe in the restoration of the garden there. That's not difficult to believe in. So you'll notice right here, this is the history of the Garden of Eden, the location of where it is, and you can't find it today, unfortunately, if you want to do those lost kingdom searches, adventurous journeys. You can't do that. It's all nothing until God restores it at the future millennium.